sister city to Nashville, Tennessee. Music City Roots is on the air. Live from the 10th United Airlines Belfast Nashville Songwriters Festival. I'm Ralph McLean from BBC Radio Ulster. We're coming to you live from the Empire Music Hall. Let's give a big hand for everybody at Music City Roots. Let's hear you in the Empire. Now I got a feeling in my Belfast bones that this is going to be some night and I am delighted to be your announcer for Music City Roots on his first ever tour of Ireland or the United Kingdom. This is history tonight, folks. It's going to be a big one. Come on! Please welcome the crew and the cast of Belfast. This is a big thing. This is a great show and we're delighted to have them in our beautiful city. Let's get started with the music. Well, our musical host for this evening is one of Nashville's most sought after songwriters. He's written hits for everyone from George Strait to Elvis Costello, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Grammy award-winning songwriter and also perhaps the sharpest dressed man in Music City and tonight, Belfast City, Jim Lauderdale. Thank you, Ralph. You've got a good imagination no one else can see It's like a three-way conversation Between you and you and me You always speak to me in color Vivid as a day is long And I could listen to you talking Till the rest have all gone home Is it the shock of recognition Traveling up and down my spine Or a little piece of the premonition That got mixed up with mine There's lots of different kinds of people It's best not to interrupt Just leave them to their own devices That's so easy to well, it's no surprise that you don't lie You will not hide away It's no surprise that you don't lie You will not hide away got a good imagination no one else can see it's like a three-way conversation between you and you and me well it's no surprise that you don't lie you will not hide away it's no surprise that you don't lie you will not hide Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Hello, Belfast. We couldn't be more excited to be here tonight. Uh, and uh, we usually do our show from a barn. So this is quite a different thing for us. This is such a, a beautiful, beautiful theater. And uh, well, um, I'll tell you what. Um, Let's get started with the broadcast this evening, and please say hello to our guest MC tonight. He's one of the UK's top radio hosts for Roots and Americana Music from BBC Ulster, Mr. Ralph McLean. Thank you, Jim. 
And every week on our show, we like to get to know our artists a little bit. And the guy who handles that is over here in our Griffin Technology chat room. He's the Roots journalist and interview guy, the man who literally wrote the book on the history of Music City, Mr. Craig Havighurst. Thank you so much, Jim. We are so glad to have Jim as our host every week at Music City Roots. It's a, it's a, it's a treat. You stay, you're a busy person, too. You make time for us. We, we're so grateful. I wanted to make sure that people knew, um, because it's, I've been following Jim's music for so long, uh, with him, albums are like having a subscription. They just keep coming, and they're always great. And uh, Jim had a bluegrass record out um, in 2013 that was terrific, and then followed that up with two records that came out at the end of the year, uh, uh, Black Roses and, uh, Jim, help me with the other title, the... Uh, the uh, uh, Blue Moon Junction. Blue Moon Junction, which is a solo songwriter record, the first he's ever done with just a guitar. And uh, anything else coming up, Jim, that we need to know about? I mean, this is... They keep coming. There's another some. album in the works. I've got an, another one coming out in April. It's a double country album called I'm a Song. Yeah, and I've heard that's a, that's a great title track. You played it on the show. So love, love working with Jim and, and everybody. The show, Music City Roots, has been on the air since um, October of 2009. It was an experiment to see if we could uh, showcase the best of Nashville that doesn't often get shown outside of Nashville. Nashville gets on uh, the radio and television, the country the scene, but there's a huge pool of artists, um, some of them emerging, some of them very well established, who make uh, what we generally refer to as Americana and Roots music. And we've had bluegrass bands, we've had songwriters, we've had soul bands, we have pure country and everything in between, every eclectic combination you could imagine. And it's a great privilege to do this every week. We do this every Wednesday uh, from the barn live. I do regret that this tends to run at a rather inconvenient hour for you here in Belfast, but I do hope that you'll visit the website and check out some of our archives at musiccityroots.com. The shows on video are uh, stacked up there in the, in the player and you can view that. Um, we're also excited to be here in Belfast, in the Nashville and Belfast, our sister cities, and have been since the, the mid-90s. And uh, that just leads to all kinds of unexpected relationships and cultural exchange. And so here we are in the 10th year of the Belfast Nashville Songwriters Festival. And that's just been a great thing both on your end, I, I'm sure, and on our end, we're, I'm sure. It's been fantastic to have folks like Gareth Dunlop, who will be on our show here soon, uh, come and meet us over there. And uh, things have happened for them, as, uh, for them by coming to Nashville, and we'll talk to Gareth about that. Um, in March, Music City Roots will feature an, a, a special Irish night with four songwriters from Ireland coming over to, uh, to play for our show. And again, that will be at a terrible time for you to watch live. Um, some thank yous are in order because we could not have been here without uh, Colin McGee and Pan Arts um, and Tourism Ireland and United Airlines. Please give them all a big round of applause. We are so grateful. So what is on tap tonight? We have a lineup of songwriters that uh, really kind of boggles the mind. And we were thrilled to see how hot, beautifully billed they were all over town and the program. We've got some of the best in the festival. We're going to be hearing from a Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, a guy who I, listened, I learned his songs when I was figuring out how the guitar worked and what folk music was. That's Donovan. He's going to be here in a little bit. From the great town of Yonkers, New York, a guy that can tell you amazing stories and has written some of the most indelible songs in music history, Chip Taylor is here. And I told y'all about Jim, and Jim's gonna do his own set of music, and it's a wonder to behold. So Jim Lauderdale's on the bill as well. But let's get started. All right. Thank you. Friends, our first artist this evening is somebody you probably know if you live here in Belfast. See, a bit more than 10 years ago, he began showcasing his voice and his songs here in his hometown. And uh, now he's on everybody's radar with airplay, a U.S. publishing deal, and songs all over television. We sure enjoyed hosting him at Music City Roots in Nashville, and it was just a given that we'd ask him here tonight. Please welcome Gareth Dunlop. Uh, 
Well, how the hell are you? Is that right? Let's go slowly Don't say you love me I don't want to roll The dice just yet Cause I've been through the fire I've lost my desire To take a chance on love again I thought folks, thank you. As Jim said, uh, I've done this Music City Road show before, out in Nashville. It's out in the big barn called the Loveless Cafe. And to be quite honest with you, I'm not entirely sure that they could understand everything I was saying in between songs. <laughs> either that or my jokes were just uh, really shit. Well, I don't need no second opinion. Yeah, I don't need no preacher to pray. No, nothing can shake the fever. No, no, nothing can break the spell. Well, now, Cupid, you've done it again. You 
You put the poison in my veins I can't stop myself from falling on down Down, down, down I'm going down into the lover's den To the lover's den This next song I want to play for you is uh, it's called Wrap Your Arms Around Me. And uh, had a bit of an odd situation occurred with this song. Um, it featured in a, in a film called Safe Haven. And uh, I got news there before Christmas that it was up for a, a Grammy nomination, a particular song. And, uh, well, no, hold on, hold on. I didn't get a Grammy now. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get that far. But um, when I got the word, a friend of mine from Nashville called and, and said he was so happy and it was the most beautiful thing that he'd heard in a long time and, and all that lovely stuff. And then a friend of mine saw it on Facebook and called, and he's from the Kruger Road. And he said, uh, well, I'm going to leave a few expletives out of what he said but the gist of it was uh, so I hear you're uh, you, you get through to this what's this Grammy thing all about I says well it's a song I wrote and I get into the film blah 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 and he says well, 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 what's the deal sure the film is shite <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing I love about this time Never let you get too far ahead of yourself, you know. Always bring you right back down to earth very, very, very quickly. It was a beautiful thing. Anyway, here's the song. We're all fragile. It's 
hard to hide The way we hurt inside When I come undone at the seams And my heart is on the floor for all to see Just do that thing that I need Wrap your arms around me Just wrap your arms around me Come wrap your arms around me We do our best to smile Fight the tears trying to creep from our eyes When a smile just won't disguise We just crumble inside When I come undone at the seams My heart is on the floor for all to see Just do that thing that I need And wrap your arms around me Just wrap your arms around me Just wrap your arms around me When I come undone at the seams My heart is on the floor for all to see Just do that thing that I need And wrap your arms around me Just wrap your arms around me Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't. Uh, I don't have too much time up here, but um, it really is uh, an amazing experience sharing the stage with these guys. Um, I mean, they're all masters of their craft. And in many ways, I, I still feel like I'm, I'm very much starting out on that journey. And I've joked on the radio a couple of times this week, I am the only man on the stage tonight without a hit. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, it's, uh, this can be all full of peaks and troughs, but this is a particular peak that I'm particularly proud of. This is a song that featured in ABC's Nashville, and it's a song I wrote with Kim Ritchie, and it's called Keep Coming Back. Distance don't mean a thing. 
Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Very kind of you. Thank you. Well, this is going to be my last song. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you for not heckling me. He's obviously know that the cameras are present.
Bring a home to me And when she's afraid And closes her eyes I could be the hand that leads her through The darker time Nothing but a fool's desire Nothing but a fool's desire Trying to ignite this fire It's nothing but a fool's desire And if she should fall Away from the dreams I could be the arms that pull her From the ground beneath And if she gives up And begins to tire I could be the strength that fuels her soul For one last try Nothing but a fool's desire Trying to ignite this fire It's nothing but a fool's desire It's got me feeling like a broken man With my heart in my head Oh Is this just a fool's desire Trying to ignite this fire Is nothing but a fool's desire A fool's desire Folks, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Gareth Dunlop. Yeah. Hometown boy, Gareth Dunlop. Okay, how many of you folks out there have a smartphone? Uh, an iPhone or an Android? Okay, well, we want to tell you about some free apps so you can stay connected with us. One is the Roots Radio app, 24-7, and you can watch live cuts from the show over the past several years, and uh, you can also hear this at rootsradio.com, and uh, also the live stream app, where people who are watching us on high-def video are doing it right now on their iPhones, and it's part of our global Roots vision. We really want to stay connected to y'all and, and have you, you know, watch us, come see us in Nashville. Maybe we'll get to come back next year. And uh, so anyway, there's just a lot of, and hey, I wasn't saying that to try to, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but now, now here's a, a word from our sponsors, from our friend Ralph. Thanks very much, Jim. I can't get over that suit. It's just beautiful. 
Jim Lauderdale, looking good, sounding good. What more could you want? Thank you very much, Jim. You're listening to Music City Roots live from the 10th United Airlines Belfast Nashville Songwriters Festival on Roots Radio. Uh, also broadcasting high def video at musiccityroots.com. For 24 7 live cuts from the Music City Roots stage in Nashville, go to rootsradio.com or search the App Store on your iPhone or Android for the free Roots Radio app. That last set of music, folks, was brought to you by Nissan. Now, we always ask that you support our sponsors because they support us. Uh, they allow us to do our thing and bring you music in fresh and innovative ways, which is why we're so proud to have Nissan as one of our sponsors. Innovation is what Nissan's all about. Not only does Nissan support Music City Roots, they also support a variety of other artistic endeavors throughout the world. As Music City Roots continues to shake things up in the world of music, Nissan is doing the same in the automotive world. Just recently, Nissan unveiled the new Altima, Pathfinder, and Sentra. And out this spring, the all-new Versa Note, Nissan's new hatchback. And they're on the cutting edge of electric cars with the amazing Nissan Leaf. We hope you'll contact with Nissan on Facebook. Tell them thanks for supporting the music. And to find a dealer near you where you can test drive a Nissan, just click on Nissan.ie. Now over to the Griffin Technology chat room for a very special guest. And uh, welcome back, please, Craig Havenhurst. Yeah, or, or down to the chat room. Folks, yeah. please say hello to Donovan. Look who I get to meet. Hello. Yeah. Cool. I'm so excited. Um, when I, I was uh, learning how to play the guitar and figuring out how to sing a song in front of an open mic, Catch the Wind was one we just... So Everybody you, you, was so learning. You, you, you learned from me. That was in the 80s, and it was a, a song that folks were really thought you had to know. I was curious how that song became, became a hit. Who, who championed it? How did it lurch from your guitar to actually get it? Well, on I was radio? on television. It was Britain. It was Ready, Steady, Go. But really, my connection with Nashville is very strong because uh, Catch the Wind was released in 1965 on Hickory Records out of Nashville. Acuff Rose, Hickory Records. So... Really, I'm Scots-Irish. I've got two grannies in, in, in Scotland. Uh, one was an O'Brien, one was a Kelly. And on the male side of things, uh, there was a Leach, uh, there was a, a Kerr. So I'm Scots-Irish, but uh, Nashville was my beginning, and Catch the Wind was released there in Britain, too. Had you been to the States at that point in 65? Had you been over and started to work well, with the scene there? Well, what happened was that telev television was big in the early 60s, uh, and in America. Um, the Ed Sullivan Show, of course, and in Britain there was the Ready, Steady, Go. And I was not more than three weeks on British television without a record, just live, no recording released, a live television. Uh, two weeks I was on there, and the Ed Sullivan Show called from New York and say, we want that kid over here now. And so I was in television first in America too. And so it happened fast. On that trip, did you make a point to try to go to the Greenwich Village folk world and start to figure out who is who and meet Joan Baez and Bob Dylan and so forth. Were you Not yet. No, that happened later. It was, I was part of what was called the pop world, a folk uh, success in a pop world, and I embraced that. I wanted to be popular because I thought that the meaning and the lyrics of the songs of the folk world should invade the popular culture because it was about peace and brotherhood. It was about civil rights and protest. Uh, I was part of all that. It would take a few other trips before I'd hung out in the village and ran into John Sebastian and Love and Spoonful and, and eventually uh, the Mamas and the Papas and Neil Young and all the other boys and girls, John Baez and Bob Dylan. But you had already ransacked some record bins for Southern blues and American hillbilly music. Had, you, had that been something you'd... Yeah, yeah. Well, we into? looked to America, but at the same time, uh, I, I, in Scotland, uh, in the, in the mid-50s, me and my cousins were under the table with a shandy while <laughs> the relatives and the hogmanay and the party would clear the front room. You know that front room where nobody goes except for parties? <laughs> There in the front room, they, uh, the women were at one end, the men were at the other, mm -hmm. and there was a, a chair pushed into the middle, and a slightly drunk, tipsy uh, relative or friend would be pushed in there to sing a song. Now, I didn't know I was hearing folk songs at that time, you understand? So there was five women, and there was my mother and her sisters, and old Mrs. O'Brien, I mean Mrs. Phillips O'Brien, the she had tattoos on each arm, and the Irish songs and the Scottish songs. So I absorbed all that. But as a teen, I fell in love, as you know, with the bohemian music of jazz, blues, and folk. And of course, I ransacked. But like Bob Dylan, and like many a guy like me, 
and a gal, uh, an older bohemian would have a, a vinyl collection. And one night, one guy sat me down and said, you could stay here two days and you study these vinyl records. So yeah, I was a, uh, I was a great student. Mm. Um, later on, you're going to come out with a beautiful green guitar that I noticed at Soundcheck, and I was curious what the story is with that instrument. Well, that green guitar is called Kelly. Um, as I told you, I have a granny on the father's side called Kelly, but she's called Kelly, and you'll see her in a minute, because of the Book of Kells, that old book down there in Trinity College in Dublin. It's a Danny Farrington guitar, American guitar maker, but I wanted to celebrate how Ireland is so much a part of my roots, uh, so I had Danny uh, copy the motifs from that 1,200-year-old manuscript oh, right. down there in Dublin. And the message of your music was very important to you. It, you were part of an activist movement and time in music. What have you? What do you? What do you say to younger songwriters now? I, I see folk music is very vibrant now, around the world, but it's not especially activist. It doesn't take on issues quite with the fervent uh, strength that it was in your era. What What do you say to artists about that? Well, they do ask me. They say, "Who's Who's?" being active today with their songwriting. But you've got to imagine, we were active in a time when nobody was active. You couldn't really uh, perform certain songs on television or radio because they were considered, well, radical. Uh, Universal but, Soldier was bumped uh, yes, off the BBC, yes, I guess. Yes, Blown it. in the Wind, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the Eve of Destruction, all, the, all these songs that were speaking of change and social issues were difficult to be sung about. Mm -hmm. So you don't need those guys known gals now to sing that. Why? Because you have the internet, you have total freedom. You can actually sing, you can have a whole YouTube channel about radical issues. It was all focused in those days on a couple of singer-songwriters that were singing those. Pete, Paul and Mary, before them, Joan Byers, before Joan Byers, Woody Guthrie, Pete Seeger. So in those days, it was the songwriter that was singing these issues, mm -hmm. the poet. Right. But now, it's the whole internet that you can, you can check Very in, check in with anything. That's what we wanted. Now it's passed over to the people. Uh, now they can start singing about radical things or speaking about them. Right. Yeah, they sure write about it on the internet. Um, you, are, uh, you are an inductee to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in the last couple of years. Congratulations on that. And then coming up this summer, the Songwriters Hall of Fame back in America. So tell us about how, what that means to you. Well, uh, the Songwriters Hall of Fame will be this June. I'm delighted. Uh, a, a light is shining on all my work. What more can I ask for? My fans uh, immediately said, it's about time. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect time. It's perfect timing. It was difficult to put your finger on me. Lots of people knew I could write skillful songs, but I kept experimenting with so many different kinds of genres. Yeah. Maybe it was difficult to place me, but it just became overwhelming. Uh, two or three years ago, I had to be placed in some kind of historical context. Mm. And uh, I remember at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, John Mellencamp spoke for 20 minutes on me before he said, and here he is, <laughs> to receive the award. And, and he walked off stage and I grabbed John Mellencamp and I said, John, give me the award. <laughs> and he went, oh yeah, the award. <laughs> Nah, that's the least important but part. But the Songwriters Hall of Fame is very interesting because I chose to do this Songwriters Festival before I knew I, would be, I was going to be inducted. And so uh, it's very important to me to come up here, not just because I'm now inducted, because I wanted to, re, as I told you, retrace my roots and yeah. after uh, all these years. And they come back to this wonderful island of song and music and poetry. Well, thanks for being part of our roots tonight. Donovan, everybody, so exciting to have you here. Thank you kindly. All right. Oh, how exciting. It falls to me to introduce our next guest because he usually introduces them, but here he is being one of them. Uh, I discovered Jim Lauderdale in the early 90s when a, a record store in my neighborhood had the good sense and good taste to put his uh, debut album uh, up as a staff pick, and I bought it sight unseen, went home, and I was hooked and have been a lifer fan ever since. His output is extraordinary. As I said before, it's almost like a subscription. Several albums every year for many years, and there is not a dud among them. They're extraordinary. And and they're varied, and we are so lucky to work with them each week. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Jim Lauderdale. 
Thank you. I crawl up the mountain. Please don't ask me why. I take my bucket with me to get closer to the sky. With the clouds below me, the world spread out around. Tears of glory on my face. I throw my bucket down. Throw down, throw down. I throw my bucket down. Throw down, throw down. I throw my bucket down. I've been all around the world. I throw my bucket down. Pass through Texarkana, Alabama bound Searching for a better place than I have ever found Extended sunset shadows from here to yonder town Standing face a human race, I throw my bucket down Throw down, throw down, I throw my bucket down Throw down, throw down, I throw my bucket down I've been all around the world, I throw my bucket down Arizona overcoat, two dollars and a map I find myself behind myself and closing on me fast Extended sunset shadows from here to yonder town Looking for a better place to throw my bucket down Throw down, throw down, I throw my bucket down Throw down, throw down, I throw my bucket down I've been all around the world, I throw my bucket down, throw down, throw down, I throw my bucket down. I've been all around the world, I throw my bucket down. I've been all around the world, I throw my bucket down. Thank you everybody. Thanks a lot. Thank you. That's a song off of a new album of mine. The record's called Black Roses. And I wrote all the songs with my friend Robert Hunter. And uh, that's an electric kind of blues record. Um, my friends, the North Mississippi All-Stars are playing on the record. And Spooner Oldham is playing the piano. And David Hood is playing the bass. And I re released a, another record on the same day. And it's an all acoustic, solo acoustic record. It's called Blue Moon Junction. And also those were written with Robert Hunter. And uh, so here's a song off of that record. Seems a long, long time ago this morning Each ticking of the clock a hammer blow Descending from the sky without a warning A lifetime in a day or nearly so Songbirds were so strangely still this morning Like an eclipse's darker light all pretense of hope forever scorning Exploding into shards of endless light Playing dice with the devil for possession Rolling bones for possession of my soul Descending from the depths of sheer depression My only hope depends on one more road Each time I turn around I see my shadow 
Falling tall and black across the ground I see you watching from a broken window Your lips are moving I don't hear a sound Do you speak in love or execration? Or in some other way I can't decide I know I won't receive an explanation Satisfactory to my wounded pride Should I chance to live until tomorrow Don't expect to know more than today Why it is the outline of my shadow Brushes your horizon as it fades away Thank you Well, this is a songwriters festival, and a great one. And I've been wanting to come over here for for a long time, and um, so this is this is just so thrilling for me. And um, my friend Chip Taylor and I, we we did a show together several years ago, and we started talking after the show, and Chip said some things and I said that sounds like a great line for a song so he wrote them down on a napkin and he's he's very prolific and um that was gosh that was about five years ago and we've been planning to get together and write a batch of songs and probably do a, a record he came up with a name the whiskey brothers and uh I've been so so busy and and he's been busy too and uh, so I thought you know while we're here we've got to write something together I mean, this is a songwriters festival, and and uh, so I gave him a lyric. I mean, a melody today. This uh, melody came to me before breakfast, and so I got with him and I gave him the melody, and uh, then he wrote down these great lyrics. And so I, you know, I'm not sure if I can do it justice or not. He had some different melody parts, but uh, I guess. It's the jet lag still. I'm not quite he here uh, yet, so please bear with me. You know, this this probably sounds like a bad pickup line, but uh, to say to a woman, my body is six hours behind, you know, but uh, kind of as a, an apologetic uh, pickup line. But, uh, but anyway, so um, I'd like to try this song. I'd like to step out on a limb, that limb may crack and I might fall. Will you catch me if I fall? I thought you would. You know, I didn't come in from a bubble off the river Lagan. Lagan. I, you folks back in the States, that's an expression we use over here. And, uh, so anyway, I've never done this song before. I haven't had time to really properly run through it. I'm probably going to make up a few things, but but why not, huh? It's a, you know, so. The ghost is in the castle, the princess is in waiting, the king is newly fading, and the time is now. Come on, my darling, wrap your arms around me. I'll take you to the country if the winds allow. And the time is now, and the time is now. We better start a journey, and the time is now. Mommy and Daddy 
don't like what you do when you're with me let's try something new and the time is now and the time is now we better start our journey and the time is now the ghost is in the castle the princess isn't waiting the queen is misbehaving with her gray on gray come on my darling wrap your arms around me i'll take you to the underground where the big boys play and the time is now and the time is now we better start our journey and the time is now and the time is now and the time is now we better start our journey and the time is now the ghost is in the castle the princess is in waiting and the time is now Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chip Taylor, I hope you will forgive me for taking those liberties. And, you know, we can always fix the song later. And, and besides, we've got a lot more songs to write together. Don't we, Chip? Right, right Chip? We've got a lot. Wouldn't you like that, folks, for us to... I did a song last night, and um, I got a request to do it again, and it's going to be on a record that will probably be out in the summertime, and I recorded it in London with Nick Lowe with his band. We're not, Nick is not on it, but his band is, and uh, his engineer, uh, Neil Brockbank, produced it. And so I'd like to do that for you. I think I'm going to call the record London South or South London or something like that. I love you more than you could know. I love you more than I can show. I'm overwhelmed. I can't tell I love you more Than I let on It's just a dream It gets me by It's just a thing That I hold high it just might be my home start wrong. I love you more than I let on. There's really nothing left to lose. You won't ever. on keeping how I feel will stay my secret
nothing left to lose You won't ever have to choose So I'll just keep on keeping How I feel will stay my secret I love more than I can show I love you more than you could know I'm overwhelmed but I can't tell I love you more than you could know I love you more than I let on I love you Thank you. Thanks a lot. Hey, uh, I'll do one that I wrote with a friend of mine. We finally put out a record together. We've known each other for about 34 years. His name's Buddy Miller. And uh, I'm sure he's been over here. And um, this one's uh, kind of an uplifting song. It's called... I lost my job of loving you. It's not always fun and games. You ride the wave and people change. I guess you did. And I did too I lost the job of loving you We had a thing We had a vibe I made it like A nine to five Planned the wrong Future through I lost the job of loving you Start to mix your work with play All sorts of things get in the way To cross that line into the blue I lost the job of loving you make mistakes I'll have to live with what I made it kills me that I'm such a fool I lost the job of loving you I've got the time to second guess I'll get by on less and less so many days to think it through I lost the job of love Thank you. Thanks so much.
I think I got time for one more. And uh, and once again, thank you all for coming out tonight. And uh, Colin, thank you so much for throwing this great festival. My grandfather and my dad came here to Belfast back in the early 50s because our kin is from up here. And uh, they were both Presbyterian ministers, Associate Reformed Presbyterian ministers. And, uh, and this one is a tune I wrote as a tribute to two guys who influenced me a whole lot. One was uh, Graham Parsons, and uh, the other one is George Jones, who we just lost last May, and um, there was a story that I read about how that Graham had a party one time out in California, and he was playing George Jones's records for people who had never heard him, and he started crying, and he said, that's the king of broken hearts, and when I read that, the song came out. The king of broken hearts doesn't ask much from his friends And he has quite a few of them They know he will understand It's just the way it goes The king of broken hearts doesn't know he's a king He's trying to forget other things Like some old chilly saints He's walking through alone He talks to angels and the stars start to spin He thinks of troubles that he's gotten in He recalls how his heart got broken and how it's still that way the king of broken hearts he is so sad and wise he can smile while he's crying inside but we know he'll be brave tonight cause he's a king of broken hearts heart got broken and how it's still that way the king of broken hearts thinks that he's there no fool he's a little bit like me and you so what's a king like that supposed to do with all that blue time He's a king of broken hearts. Thank y'all so much. Y'all are wonderful. Thank you. Jim Lauderdale, ladies and gentlemen. Jim Lauderdale. Thank you, Jim. Those new records really are superb. Folks, from the inception of Music City Roots, we had a vision to create a global point of discovery for what we feel is some of the most important music in the world today. Here in this uh, part of the world, we would find the roots of our roots music, and that means a lot to be here. So let's stay connected. We hope you'll find us in whatever way you prefer. We're out there on the web at musiccityroots.com. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We have a blog at Tumblr, and we're on the YouTube channel, which is approaching 
8 million views of all our tracks that we've posted from our performances over these four years. So again, musiccityroots.com is your spot for all that. And speaking of staying connected, it is really awesome to click on a BBC radio program from the UK and hear an Irish guy who knows more about Americana music than most American DJs. And I'm not kidding. We happen to think he's pretty amazing. We definitely dig his taste in music. Our regular radio announcer is Grand Old Opry legend Keith Bilbrey. But tonight, we're absolutely honored to have this guy filling our shoes from BBC Radio, Ralph McLean. Thank I you, Craig. Thank you, folks. We having a good night here in the Empire? We are having a great night in the Empire tonight. Thank you, Craig. Those are big shoes to fill, and it's a great honor to be filling them tonight. Uh, now, as I say, my name's Ralph McLean. I present the evening show on BBC Radio Ulster here in Ireland, and it runs Wednesday, Thursday, Friday between 8 and 10. All kinds of good music, of course, for you folks, and you can follow me on Twitter at Ralph McLean BBC, or pick out the BBC Radio Ulster webpage, uh, which is there for you with all the programmes right across the schedule, and it's great to connect with our friends from Music City Roots. Aren't we pleased to see them here tonight, folks? Aren't we pleased to see these guys with us here in our city? Just wonderful. I'm going to take another word from our sponsors now. Griffin Technology is a Nashville-based company, but their amazing products can be found worldwide. They're all about connecting and protecting the gear that keeps us connected to the technology. He just unconnected you. <laughs> the connecting the gear, uh, uh, disconnecting I see that. certain cable. Oh, wait, here we go. That was just an example of the kind of connecting that, that these guys like to do. <laughs> Let's have a round of applause for connections. Can't beat a good plug-in, that's what I said, certainly on a night like this. Uh, it is great, though, that uh, we've got so many good technical people here tonight, believe you me. Uh, they keep us connected to the technology, cases and accessories for everything from iPads, iPhones, Androids and Kindles to chargers, speakers, earbuds, simply everything you need to connect to play. Look for the Griffin logo to know that you're supporting a company that supports cool music and art across the world. And to see the full line up of all their products, go to griffintechnology.com. Let's go, in fact, to the Griffin Technology chat room. Now, back to you, Craig. Thanks a lot. And we're going to have a few words while we set up the next act with your friend, Gareth Dunlop. Say hey to Gareth. So good to get to know you over in, uh, in Nashville. And we'll talk about how Nashville's, um, you know, shaped your life and your career a little bit in a minute. But I, I really wanted to get... Your view of, of Belfast. I, I asked you about this question when we were in Nashville, but it's, it's cool to ask it here. Um, what were, especially the musical side, what was the, the radio or local artists or something that got you inspired uh, to play music here in, in this city that, were, that was specific to this city? Well, I think, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard for a day to go past in Belfast that you won't find live music in some place, in some corner, in a bar somewhere and, and it's a wonderful environment to grow up around and I think naturally it was it, it, it's what I wanted to do I wanted to play music I wanted to perform in front of people I wanted to write songs and it all came together uh, yeah very naturally I, I hope I'm not giving anything away but I've been told that perhaps you were playing music in bars before you were legally qualified to do so <laughs> very much so yeah I, uh, I was uh, all, all thanks to the beard I was growing up here when I was when I was about fourteen. So, what what gives somebody the um, that uh, it's more than inspiration? It's a kind of confidence, a kind of uh, heedless confidence to say, I, I can I can push this forward. I can do this, and it takes it takes hours on the front end of of writing a lot of stuff that you know no one's ever going to hear, and playing a lot of places that you probably wouldn't maybe want to be. Um, but uh, talk about that stretch of your life where you really had to, where no one was recognizing it yet, but you, you knew you had to do it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's peaks and troughs, you know, for no matter where, where you are on the scale of, uh, uh, you know, of, of music, it's always ups and downs. And the Belfast Nashville Songwriters Festival was pivotal for me and, uh, and bring me out to Nashville and, and learning about uh, about the industry, playing some shows, and right. I mean, before that, I was playing everybody else's music for a living, which wasn't a bad living. It was a great, it was a great place to be in. But uh, oh, because when you play in bars, you got to play cover songs. People want to hear songs that they already know. A lot of the time, yeah, yeah. A lot of the time. Well, talk about the first trip to Nashville. What year? How long ago was it? And uh, it went pretty well for you. <laughs> Going back about four or five years ago, yeah, went over a first gig I played was in the Bluebird Cafe. Um, Amazing place. Everyone is uh, 
as attentive as this and uh, <laughs> yeah, it is as intimidating as this is, yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know the history of a venue like that, you know the people that have blew through a venue like that and, and people that have been picked up right. and careers that have been started and amazing things. That have, and it, it is a bit of pressure and, and I, I played an In The Round show there and after that I was approached by uh, a couple of publishers and things started to blossom and mm -hmm. uh, took up my first publishing the, deal the, as, as a result of that, yeah. The one thing that they will tell you that you can never expect in Nashville that people do seem to still think is that you go, I'll go there, I'll get my guitar, I'll play a show in a place like the Bluebird and, I'll, and somebody will come up to me and give me a publishing deal. It never happens, <laughs> but it happened to Gareth. Um, <laughs> Another Nashville connection that's cool was, uh, was John Oates. You met John Oates, who uh, has played our show and hung out a little bit, and, and, uh, of Hall and & Oates, and he's taken a, a real nice turn with his writing and his, and his connections and, and really spent a lot of time in the Americana and folk communities. But you got to go out to a songwriter's uh, camp of some kind that he invited you out to? Well, no, it wasn't his, it wasn't his songwriter's camp. Was, we did a show here in Belfast together a couple of years back, and, um, and yeah, we kind of hit it off backstage. We were talking... The, we were talking the same language, and uh, we worked out that I was going to be in Nashville a couple of months later, and he asked me did I, did I fancy writing with him, and writing with somebody of that caliber is always intimidating, but it was, a, right. it was a, an amazing experience writing with John. You know, he's got, I don't know how many number one hits under his belt, maybe 11 or 12 or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a learning curve, and uh, it was great writing with John. Really, really good time. Well, just before we wrap up, tell me what's, what's next and where you are in the recording cycle, what you have out that, uh, um, and, wh and what you think might happen in 2014. It's, uh, it's been EPs up until now, and I would really love to look back on 2014 and, and see the first, the first album happen. <laughs> There's a lot of, to quote a phrase, a lot of stuff in the basement. It's about time I got in front of the mic and just forgot about the production side of things and just mm. sang some songs and put it out there. All right. Yeah. If, has, if you have to come to Nashville to make it happen, we'll work it out for you. We'll <laughs> nice. Gareth Dunlop, he's a proud son. <laughs> Happy to know him. And I get to turn things back over to Jim Lauderdale. Thanks, Craig and Gareth. You know, uh, we lost part of the script back there, so I'm flying by the seat of my pants. Uh, my body is six hours behind. Uh, hello. But um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wing this and improvise, but it's not gonna be too hard. You know, we wanted to bring you something wild, a wild thing, and we have because this this man wrote the song, "Wild Thing." He's in 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 martial arts. We we have masters and we have grandmasters, and this man is is truly a grandmaster. And um, the last time I saw him several months ago in Nashville, we spoke, and there was something about him and when we spoke and also when I heard him play. And he's, he's been great for so long, but he's, there was something even different. I mean, I, I felt like, wow, you know, this is, he's, he's just changed. He's, he's getting bigger than life, and there was something so deep about him. And I, I don't want to say anything you know more you'll you'll see what i'm talking about and uh uh he's got a great new album stop the block, s out. block out the sirens of this lonely world please welcome it's a great honor mr chip taylor <laughs> hi everybody it's uh it's truly great to be here and uh, I, I think so many, any, anybody who knows me knows that I love to come to this country. I love to particularly come to Belfast. And I'm, and I'm so pleased to be with my friend here. Uh, th th this fellow's been playing with me since the early 70s. And he's also been out with, uh, with several famous people. Um, and, and Bonnie Raitt and so many others. But the one that you probably know him best for is he's played with Van Morrison all these years. He's the guy that played on Moondance and Domino. John Platanik. <laughs> now, I was uh, born and raised in a town in Yonkers, New York, which is just outside of New York City. 
It kind of reminds me of Belfast. It's a working man's town, it's a great town. Uh, one of the things it did not have growing up, it didn't have any good music. And, and my, my mom and dad were so kind, they knew I loved music and they let me listen to the little Motorola radio between the kitchen and the bedroom. I could listen to it every night a little bit to see if I could pick up a signal from out of town that would play something I liked. And I heard country music when I was just a little kid and it just, just, just totally moved me and I, I, I just, oh, and it was, not, it was not the happy, clever songs that you hear nowadays on the radio. It was the sad stuff that I loved. That's what really moved me and changed me. Uh, I have a song that speaks of my love of country music and also the blues records, which I couldn't hear in Yonkers, but I heard them on the radio. And they were called the race records from down south at the time. So here's a tribute to that. I had this out and I'm called The Real Thing, I mean Last Chance. The song is called The Real Thing. It's been recorded by several other folks, including Stoney Edwards and, and George Strait. And it goes like this. Well, I was on a bus coming back to us from Atlanta in 53. Now, the truth is I was not coming back from Atlanta. I was coming back from Bronxville, New York, but George Strait would never have recorded it. I said Bronxville. <laughs> and I picked up a rhythm and blues magazine laying underneath my seat. That's a true story. And I found out the stuff they were playing us wasn't me from grits and bones. And it would take more than the crew cuts Pat Boone to take me home Cause I want the real thing I'd work with me and hear the real thing All night lady, make it loud Make you proud of the songs that they'd sing like Annie had a baby under my roof With your 86 proof Put her down that tastes like tea Gonna pull my string Make it a real thing for me And I remember old Elvis When he forgot to remember To forget And when young Johnny Cash Hadn't seen his side this side of the big river yet And when sun was more than the daylight Shining on Memphis, Tennessee And old Luther and Lewis and Perkins Was picking and playing them songs to me And I want the real thing Like train of loves and leaving Leaving my heart grieving Don't it make you proud of the songs like everybody's baby, but mine's coming home Don't want you under my roof With your 86 proof water down Tastes like tea Gonna pull my string Make it a real thing for me Here's the real thing, John Platang And playing them songs to me And I want the real thing Like work with me, Annie The real thing All night, lady, make it loud I'll make you proud of the songs they sing Like Annie had a baby under my roof With your 86 proof Watered down with it tastes like tea Gonna pull my string Make it the real thing for me you're gonna pull my string, make it the real thing for me. Uh, here's a song that's from my new album. It's actually the title song of my new album. And, uh, this, a lot of the feeling of the album is kind of born in the tragedy of a couple of years ago in Norway when the little kids were killed. And I was there at the time, and uh, 
So uh, I took a lot of the spirit of that. I played in some churches and wrote some songs for them. And uh, this is ded dedicated to those folks. And hold on. Don't say nothing. Take a deep breath and let it out. And block out the sirens of this lonely world. And know how great you are. And Ingrid. Ingrid, is that you over there? Well, I ain't seen you since Tron time heavens. And block out the sirens of this lonely world. Light a candle with your heart. We can get to the bottom of this thing We can get to the bottom of this thing We can get to the bottom of this We can get there Is that you over there? Well, I ain't seen you since Malmo was freezing. Then block out the sirens of this lonely world. Put that poster near you, bed. The next person I'm going to sing about in the next verse is a prisoner. And I've done a lot of prison shows over the last few years. And this one show that I was doing, John was there with me, and we were doing a show, and it was actually a workshop for would-be prison songwriters. And it was kind of a lovely thing. And uh, first I did talk to them about how I got in the music business and told them that when I first started, I sold my songs for $30 and how how much I loved doing it and kept, kept at it. And, and then I started singing them some songs and after I sang one of them, one of the prisoners raised his hands and I said, uh, yes, T Tilly, can I help you? And he said, uh, Chip, while you, were, while you were singing that song, I, I wrote a song. I, I said, you weren't paying attention to me, Tilly? <laughs> he said, no, oh, Chip, I, I, I just got moved by something. I said, well, okay, tell me about it. He said something like this. He said, the song is about John. He said, he's got silver in his hair now, and he's played for kings and queens. And he could still be playing for kings and queens, but in this scene here, he's playing for us, the prisoners. And now, I don't think there's a better lyric than that. You know, that's something. I said, Tilly, that's, that's amazing. I said, that's better than anything I've written in a long time. He said, you, you really like it? I, I said, I, I really love it, Tilly. He said, where's my $30? <laughs> uh, now that is, that's a nice story, it sounds nice, but it's actually tr absolutely exactly what happened. When I got home, I sent them all CDs, and in Tilly's CD, 
I put a check for $30. He cashed a damn thing. <laughs> and Tilford, Tilly, is that you over there? Well, I ain't seen you this side of prison wall. And block out the sirens of this lonely world Don't let the humans get you down And block out the sirens of this lonely world And know how great you are I, uh, I, 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 for some of you don't know, I wanna, one of the things I do is write songs, and the other thing that I've done many t over the years is I've, I've been a gambler, an addicted gambler, a, go a good gambler. I was banned from all the casinos in Atlantic City, and I worked hard to be a good horse race handicapper. But I gave up music for a while, totally, and gambled. I came back in 1996. My mom got ill, and I started singing for her. I got the spirit that I wanted to play music for people wherever they were. One of the first places I came was to Belfast. The first place I came when I flew overseas was to Belfast. There was a lot of... <laughs> now this was, a, this was in 96 and a lot of the artists didn't want to come here. They were a little nervous about it. And well, I, I might have been that, but I, had, I just loved the spirit. I played in a little place called the Rotterdam. M made uh, made many 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 friends there, and that started a spirit and a, a spirit of me playing around around the country. But I always wanted to come back to Belfast; those were my favorite shows. And the north of Ireland is where I love to play. So um, uh, I, I wrote a song. I uh, the the wonderful DJ Jerry Anderson. I know is ill now, and uh, I heard him talking about. Uh, problems and the Stroke City stuff and everything like that. So I wrote a song for about that. And sing it if you know it. Andrea, I miss you My precious Irish pearl The cold rain still the same Since I'm halfway around the world and may the flag of peace and freedom catch you as it swirls in the cool grooves of the Stroke City girls. And Aoife, how are you doing? Your story's just begun. And I remember port rush nights and waking to the sun. And may the winds of hope and glory catch you as it swirls in the cool grooves of the Stroke City girls. Are you ready? Here we go. Limavati. Limavati. Letter Kenny, back in the middle, it's Stroke City, 50 miles from Valley Castle, on the banks of Old Lock Boyle. Donna, there's a memory playing with my mind. Well, it's you and me in a dance till three Sandinos closing time. And may the sound of love, thy neighbor, echo through your curls to the cool grooves of the Stroke City girls. Here you go, John. And may the 
the sound of love thy neighbor echo through your curls to the cool grooves of the stroke city girls one more time we got limo body limo body letter canny back in the middle it's stroke city 50 miles from Valley Castle on the banks of Old Loch Foyle. Andrea, I miss you, my precious Irish pearl. Is cold rain still the same since I'm halfway around the world? And may the flag of peace and freedom catch you as it unfurls in the cool grooves of the Stroke City Girls. And may the sound of love thy neighbor echo through your curls to the cool grooves of the Stroke City Uh, I got started, as I said, I was from Yonkers, New York, listening to that Motorola radio between the kitchen and the bedroom, heard country music for the first time. I'm from Yonkers. I had a country band in Yonkers, the only one I knew around town. I wrote country songs, and somehow I got in the business. Willie Nelson recorded one of mine, and Eddie Arnold, and then uh, the Brown family. My God, I loved the Brown family so much, I couldn't believe they were recording one of my songs. Then Waylon Jennings, then Johnny Cash. I was in the business as a country and western songwriter from Yonkers, New York, making bets every day with Meyer Lansky. Could you imagine the life I had? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Somehow in the middle of all that, I started to write other than country songs and had a couple of big hits. And here's one of them, and sing it if you know it. I remember the day I wrote this song. I was, uh, had watched a war movie the night before, and, and in the, uh, the, hero, the hero and the heroine might never see each other again. It was a very touching thing, and I think that's what moved me to write this song. be no strings to bind your hands not if my love can't bind your heart and there's no need to take a stand it was I who chose to start she said I see no need to take me home I'm old enough to face the dawn Just call me angel of the morning Angel, just touch my cheek before you leave me, baby just call me angel of the morning angel Then slowly turn away And maybe the sun's light will be dimmed And it won't matter anyhow If morning's echo says we've sinned, honey, it was what we needed now. 
And if we're victims of the night I won't be blinded by the light Just call me angel of the morning angel Just touch my cheek before you leave me, baby Just call me angel of the morning angel Then slowly turn away I won't beg you to stay Through the tears, honey Of the day Of the sweet, sweet day Baby of the year Oh baby, oh my baby, just call me angel of the morning, angel, just touch my cheek before you leave me, baby, just call me angel of the morning, angel. Just call me angel of the morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, I'm extending my stay here already, but let me give you this one last one. This is the one I wrote before, just before Angel of the Morning. And I, again, I was a country and western writer, and I started to write some, use the blues influence to start writing some rock and roll and country and popish kind of things or rhythm and blues things. And uh, a fellow called me on the phone. He was a songwriter and a record producer. And I had never met him, but he had a re good reputation. He said, Chip, he said, I hear you're writing some good rock and roll songs. Would you send me one? I need one tomorrow for a group I'm producing. So I said, Gee, I was so flattered that he called me. I said, Jerry, his name was Jerry Granahan. I said, Jerry, le let me try to write you something today. So I started fooling around with this song. And I had a chorus, and I knew I wanted to stop and say stuff. But I didn't want to write it with my brain. I didn't, I didn't want to just do it. I figured the best way for me to do it was to go to the studio, sing the chorus, stop, and say something to this person I was thinking about on the spot. So I didn't write anymore. I waited till I got to the studio. And I asked Ron, I said, when I get there, have my stool set up and the microphone set up, but turn the lights out as soon as I'm ready. I didn't want to, I wanted to sing this song as Ralph McLean and I talked about it the other day. And Ralph said, you wanted to sing it in darkness. I said, that's true. I wanted to sing it in absolute darkness and just picture this person and not be interrupted by any other thoughts. So this is what happens. Two, three, four, wild thing. Wild thing, I think I love you, but I want to know for sure, so come on and hold me tight. Uh, 
I love wild things You make my heart sing You make everything Moving Come on, wild thing Here comes John Platania, your rock and roll Right there, John Platania. <laughs> Wild thing, I think you move me. But I wanna know for sure. Just come on, hold me tight. It moved me Wild thing, shake that thing You make my heart sing You make everything, 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 everything Come on, come on Wild thing All right, let's get a little quiet, now, John or, and I, I, you know, I promised I was going to dedicate that last song, Angel of the Morning, to my friend Michael over here. And I forgot to do that, but I will dedicate this chorus to uh, my friend Michael. And we'll all sing this chorus here. All right. Here we go. One chorus of Wild Thing from a deeper place. Are you ready? One, two, one, two, you're ready. Four. One more time, we gotta get better than that. From the deeper place, everything you've got. One, two, three, four. Wild thing! You make my heart sing. You make everything. Well, it was a pretty damn good chorus, but a pretty weak groovy, but we'll accept it. Come on, a wild thing! Oh, Baby. Oh, you look so good, girl. Oh, come on now. You know who you are. Feel that thing. Shake that thing. Come on. Come on. Come on. Wild thing. Shake it one time for me. The one and only John Platania. Thank you, everybody. The great Chip Taylor. Yes, Chip Taylor. Woo. There's our friend Michael. We're all going to get it together and jam at the very end. Folks, um, we brought a little merch with us. Uh, Ralph, is that what they call it yeah, over here? Yeah, we go merch? with merch. Yeah, we go with merch, Jim. Yeah. I, Merchandise, I, yeah, t shirts stuff like that. Okay, yeah. I thought so. Um, I bet my friend Andy Peters out there will probably. Let's hear it for Andy. I bet he'll buy, he'll buy a lot. Uh, Andy, I have three CDs of my own over there. I know you'll buy. Uh, or else security will throw you out. Um, but uh, no, kidding, Andy. But um, we, we also have some limited edition hatch show prints. And uh, 
to commemorate tonight's show. Only a hundred were made, and uh, they're printed on an antique letterpress at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum. Also, we've got a few T-shirts, and um, just go see our friend Frank back there. Uh, and ladies, one at a time with Frank. He's an <laughs> Irish American single guy. Please don't overwhelm him, uh, but uh, he came with us to help with security and merch. But, uh, and everything is just 10 pounds. Uh, that doesn't really weigh yeah, 10 pounds. There are probably a few grams. We talk Ralph. pounds, pounds, dollars, Jim, and it's all the same. Think the man in black, it's all cash. Yeah. That's right, yeah. yes. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Jim Lauderdale, ladies and gentlemen. I still can't get over that suit. I want me one of those beautiful suits, electric blue with a, a touch of stitching down the side. That man has style. Are we having a good night, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Let's give a big Belfast hello to everybody watching in, listening in to Music City Roots tonight. Let's hear you. Such a pleasure, such an honor to host Music City Roots tonight. And you're listening to Music City Roots live from the 10th United Airlines Belfast Nashville Songwriters Festival on Roots Radio. Also broadcast in high def video at musiccityroots.com. Special thanks to Kyle O'Connell and IFTS, the Irish Film and Television Service for the hire of the network TriCaster 8000 that makes it possible to stream this show worldwide tonight. And thanks to Kyle for coming all the way from Dublin to jump on one of the cameras tonight as well. If you need professional video gear or production for any event, make sure to get hold of IFTS. And that last set of music, and wasn't it wonderful, was brought to you by Star 129 Diamond with offices in New York and Nashville. Star 129 uses patented technology to create the most scintillating diamond on the planet. You just have to go to their web page and uh, see the difference. Take a look at star129.com. Now back to the Griffin Technology chat room with Craig Havenhurst. Thanks a lot, and I get to say a few words with Chip Taylor. One more time for Chip. I think that set went over well. Nice to see you again, Craig. And to think that uh, there was a time when you thought you were going to play golf for a living. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't know if I mentioned that. My dad was a golf professional, and I... Uh, and, you know, it wasn't a glamorous job back then being a golf professional. It was, my dad was a poor kid, off the fence of a golf course, learned how to play, and I had a job. But thank God he had a job to have the family. And I almost did that, but somebody recorded one of my songs, and there I was in the business. So. What was the first one that, said, that, that got you actually the first thirty do, The first $30 check that I got, the first $30 check I got was uh, for a song uh, named Just a Little Bit Later On Down the Line. And uh, I remember when I... When, I, the publisher wouldn't take an appointment with me, and the secretary said, no, you can't see you today, not tomorrow, not the next day. So I got my guitar, went down to the office, and just said, I'm here to see Mr. Schroeder. And she said, I talked to you a little while ago. He can't see you now. I said, I know you said that. I'll wait. And the wait turned out to be about three hours that Mr. Schroeder came out and said, you're still here. Make a long story short, he listened to my song, published it. Mm -hmm. Then he, as I was waiting for the elevator, he handed me this little piece of paper. It was a check for $30. He said, don't ever leave without one of these if you get a song published. And so that was the start of it. Of course, for me. he kept the copyright then, didn't he? <laughs> well, yeah, no, we shared, you know, it was it a did. share. Oh, it, was it was a real back, deal. It was back in those days in advance, didn't we? You hear these stories where people say, oh, well, I lost, I sold half of my song for $30. Well, huh. well, that was a great deal for me to sell it to Mr. Sure. Schroeder's great company for half of it. I kept half, he got half, and he went out and promoted it, and I got a hit with Bobby Bear. Yeah. I wouldn't have done that by myself, so that's. Did that lead to the, you had a relationship with Chet Atkins. He was loving your songs down in Nashville. You were in New York. How did that come yeah, to play? Yeah, Craig, that's true. I, uh, I sent him a, 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 this little song called Springtime. And uh, he heard it and he sent a note back to the publisher. He said, he said I'm gonna, Jerry, I'm going to record that song you sent. I have no idea who Chip Taylor is. Mm -hmm. He said, it's very hard for me to believe he's from New York. He said, but wherever he's from, I want to hear every song he writes. And that was the start of it. So I had this, had that thing with Bobby Bear, and then Chet Atkins cut almost everything I set down. Because Chet was not only the great guitar player, he was the head of RCA Victor's A&R department, choosing all the songs for his artists. And so that was huge for me. That got me, that that's really was my big break. Where was your, where were you actually doing your actual work? Where was your he headquarters? Well, 
I, I kind of would write any place, but, but I had, I was signed to a publishing company, uh, once I had a little success with Chet, I was signed to a publishing company in New York, it was CBS's first company, April Blackwood Music, and I had a, I was there, I had a space, an office writing space, it's where I wrote Angel of the Morning, it's where I wrote Wild Thing, and, it, and if you walk by the building and you see a sign that says 1650, there's a glass thing that says 1650, right behind that glass is where I wrote Angel of the Morning and Wild Thing. And it was a very comfortable space. I had a piano there, which I didn't use that much. I played a little piano, just banged on it. But I wrote mostly with Other guitar. writers in the space? There were, little, yeah, kind of it was, they, we all had little rooms. Yeah. That eight, eight, eight rooms there. Yeah. How did you come to, I think you recorded Last Chance in Nashville, right? I recorded Last Chance in Boston. Oh. It sounds like, it sounds like a Nashville record yeah. because I, I was signed to, I was signed to uh, Warner Brothers then, and they expected me to make a rock and roll record because I had this success rock and roll. And I locked myself away, and I went up to Massachusetts, and I cut Last Chance a Country album. And I remember when they Warner Brothers first heard it, they sat around the table, and after they heard the whole thing, every there was total silence. And one of the the promotion guys got up. He said, "Chip, I think I can speak for the entire staff here." He said, "That's a wonderful album." But that's a country album, and we don't have a country division on the record. Company. <laughs> so it was, but it, it became an underground hit. It's a it's a cult classic. People uh, clamor for that LP. Um, I was going to ask, how did Wild Thing make it from the various acts? Several several people played it at uh, very close proximity. The Trogs and, and Jimi Hendrix and. Uh, the, the wild ones, How, why did it wind up in so many hands? Well, as I mentioned, the one fellow asked me for a song and I, and I sang the song and sent it to him and, he, and that was Jerry Granny and he produced it with a group called The Wild Ones. But he, he, he didn't, the way I played it here, he didn't record it like, he made a nice little record, but it was a blues record. It sounded like a, a lot of other things. And, and then the Trogs recorded it like the demo, like you heard me play it here. And then, then when the Trogs recorded it and it became number one, Jimi Hendrix heard it on the, on the radio and told his girlfriend, I heard a song, that's, that's the best song, I can't believe you have to hear this thing. And he was in the shower when it played and he jumped out of the shower and said, that's the song. Yeah. So if it wasn't for the Trogs record, I would not never have Jimi Hendrix singing it. And I owe a really debt to that great, great humble group. And Reg Presley passed away last year, and he was a wonderful guy, and a, a great force in this business. And uh, and I and I miss him. And in more recent years, after you you alluded to it, getting back in after some time away, and your interesting life as a professional gambler. But you you've uh, made you've you've toured uh, widely and come to Europe a lot. You made some wonderful records with uh, some some collaborator musicians, uh, Kendall Carson and and uh, Carrie Rodriguez. And what would you say has been driving you and inspiring you at this, in this stage? You know, it's, it, I was talking to Midge Yore today, and one of the wonderful things about this festival is it brings all of us together. I never met Donovan before here. We are from the same generation, had a lot of the similar influence, and he's a wonderfully talented guy and has a great new album. And I, I hadn't seen Midge Yore since 1991. He called me at my room and said, let's get together the other, and that was, and that was wonderful. And I was talking to Midge about that. I was saying, you know, it's like I was, I was once addicted to gambling. Well, I'm totally addicted to music now. I can't stop writing songs, you know? And, I, and it's like uh, I just wake up and do it, and I get, and, and I was talking to some folks at Martin, and said, I, we were in a class to get, yesterday, and I was saying that my whole thing is guided by getting chills. When I first heard country music, I got a chill. When I first heard My Wild Irish Rose in the th theater, I got such a chill. So I'm looking for that all the time. So if I can let something out of me, some emotion that I don't really identify except for it feels right to me and I get a chill, that guides me. So I'm looking for those chills every day. And I, that's what's inspiring me to keep going. I can't stop. That's what it is. You're doing the best work of your life, Chip. <laughs> Chip Taylor, everybody. Thank you for being here with us. It means so much. Thank you, Chip. Back to the stage with Jim Lauderdale. Thanks, Chip. Great show. Thanks, Craig. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't get to be in too close proximity to such greatness. And uh, I've been such a fan of this man for so many years. And there's so much 
I could say about this rock and roll Hall of Famer. And I told him backstage, I, I said, I'm, I'm a little tongue-tied around you, but he's such a, a kind and sweet guy, and you're about to be blown away by Donovan. Did this yellow is the color of my true love's hair? Help me in the morning, when we rise in the morning, when we rise, that's the time, that's the time. Yeah, I love the best.
I'm just doing a very short set, of course, part of this wonderful show, beaming out across the world, and I'm so happy to be part of the Songwriters Festival here in Belfast. Um, as a songwriter, uh, it's obvious I've written some very popular songs, and I'm so very happy that everyone loved them so much and still plays them everywhere. But I often want to play you something you don't know, perhaps. This was on my Sutras album in 1996, produced by the extraordinary producer Rick Rubin, who, by the way, this week was just honored in Los Angeles for his great achievement on this album that Rick produced called Sutras with me. Is this song. And about songwriting, I'm always looking for new structures, and this one surprised me how it worked out. It's called Please Don't Bend My Heart. Thank you. 
You like that? Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you. Back in 1966, this was going on. Oh yeah, sunshine came softly through my window today. Heard it too tired, he said, but I changed my way. It'll take time, I know it. But in a while, Come on, girls. You know, we're gonna do it in style. When you've made your mind up, you're going to be mine. I'll tell you right now, any chick in the book now, baby, that I can find. Everybody's hustling me just to have a little scene.
fly, there's the jazz club. If you want your cup, I will fill. They call me Mellow Yellow, quite bright slim. They call me Mellow Yellow, quite bright slim. They call me Mellow Yellow, oh yeah. Oh yeah, keep going with that beat. You wanna do this for us? Electrical banana. It's gonna be a sudden craze. Let me hear you now. Electric banana. It's gonna be the very next phase. They called it mellow yellow. Quite right slim. They call me mellow yellow. Quite right slim. They call me mellow yellow. Oh yeah. Okay, saffron. I'm just mad about saffron. Saffron's mad about me. Thank you, Belfast. I'm just mad about saffron. Thank you, Nashville. Just mad about her. They call me mellow yellow. Quite rightly. They call me mellow yellow. Right slim, they call me mellow yellow, and he's so mellow. They call me mellow yellow, mellow fellow. They call me mellow yellow. Oh yeah, they call me mellow yellow, mellow Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, good night. Maybe we can get him to do one more. Yeah. This is for all you witches out there. You know who you are. There's one over there. There's another one up there. This is called Season of the Witch. When I look out my window, so many sights to see. to be that it's strange so strange okay, come on girls you got to pick up every stitch let me hear you you got to pick up every stitch you got to pick up every stitch for you guys in a minute when I look over my shoulder what do you think I see some of the cat looking over his shoulder at me and he 
guys go you got to pick up every stitch Ooh. yeah boys you got to pick up every stitch Ooh. oh no must be the season of the witch must be the season Witch. Whoa, yeah, oh no. Yeah. Got him in. Thank you. Thank you, Belfast. Thank you, Nashville. Folks, don't go away. We are going to have uh, the Music City Roots jam in just a few minutes here after some other announcements. Thank you, Jim. Wasn't that amazing? I said, wasn't that amazing? People of the Empire Music Hall, Belfast, here in Northern Ireland, broadcasting right across the world. Well, you've been listening to Music City Roots live from the Belfast Nashville Songwriters Festival. We'd like to give special thanks to our friends at United Airlines for making this night possible. As a matter of fact, thanks for making this entire festival possible. Next time you fly, remember that United Airlines supports the music that you love, folks. Stay tuned for the Loveless Jam in just a moment. But here's Craig just to wrap things up. Right on, everybody. You have been an amazing audience. Thank you for your rapt attention. Your enthusiasm, it's been such a pleasure to be here with you guys. And uh, it was an amazing set of music. Thank you to Donovan, Chip Taylor, Jim Lauderdale, Gareth Dunlop, one more time for an amazing four sets of great songwriting. It really is a privilege to hear these guys up close and personal. Uh, be sure to watch online because I mentioned before we're gonna have some uh, Irish uh, artists over in Nashville at our barn here on March 19th or as you say over here, 19 March. I still don't get that. But um, it's a, a Sister Cities Irish tribute show with Wilfie Gilbert, uh, Triona Carvo, Peter McVeigh, and Stephen McCartney of uh, The Farriers. And we've got a special bonus guest there, Pete Anderson, Dwight Yoakam's producer and an amazing guitarist and songwriter himself. So we'll be there on March 19th. And again, like I said, the show's in the middle of the night for you all, but you can watch archives online and uh, watch our YouTube channel for uh, great you know, highlights, and rootsradio.com is a place to go and listen to some of our very best performances going back four, four years, and uh, that's available to you all. So I think we're going to get back to the stage. Ralph, one more time. Thank you, Craig. Let's hear it for this man down here, a dapper gentleman in his waistcoat, looking smart, doing the interviews tonight, hanging it all together. Let's hear it for Craig. And let me just say as well a big thanks to all our U.S. sponsors from Nissan through Griffin Technology, Star 129 Diamond, and the sponsor of this final segment. The world-famous Loveless Cafe is the home of Music City Roots in Nashville. If you've ever listened, I'm sure your mouth has watered as they talk about the famous biscuits, the homemade jams, the preserves, and gourmet bacon, and smoked meats. But what you need to know, folks, they'll ship an authentic taste of Tennessee night right to your door anywhere in the world. Just take a look at lovelesscafe.com. They're a sponsor of our final segment. All of our guest artists, who Craig just mentioned, have returned to the stage for the Loveless Jam, where we encourage all the musicians to stretch out just a little bit on a favorite song, and that's what's going to happen now. To find out exactly what that song is going to be, I give you back one last time. The great Jim Lauderdale. Thank you, Ralph. Let's give Ralph a big hand. Thank you. Colin McGee, thank you so much for throwing this great, wonderful songwriting festival and give it, get, there you are, and giving us this opportunity. Thank you. And, um, you know, since uh, the Lauderdales left County Down, 
in 1817 and uh, took the boat over to South Carolina. We're going to do a song for you right now that uh, the Carter family made famous. And I can't help thinking and that Donovan was talking backstage, you know, of all the, the Irish songs that were brought over that became popular, you know, maybe A.P. Carter took this melody and, and song idea it could have originated over here. Guys, thank you all so much. Gareth, Donovan, and Chip. We've just had a wonderful time. Thank you so much. So we'll leave you with this one, and please sing along on the chorus. I will stand in by my window on a dark and cloudy day. But I saw that hers come rolling for to carry my sweet mother away. Well, the circle be unrolled.
songs of childhood, hymns of faith that made us strong. Ones that the mother Mabel taught us Hear the angels sing along Come on, angels Will the sir Come on back out here. Uh, Ralph, stretch things out Thanks for here that, Jim. while we're figuring. Uh... <laughs> Let me tell you a story about BBC Radio Ulster and the shows that I present. Now that I have a global audience in my palm of my hand, BBC Radio Ulster, Wednesday to Friday for the best in roots music. If you've enjoyed the music tonight, folks, tune in to Radio Ulster. All the shows are there for you, bringing you great music and keeping music live. Isn't it important that we celebrate live music? Well, that's exactly what Music City Roots does. It's exactly what BBC Radio Ulster does as well. So join me. You can follow me on Twitter, at Ralph McLean BBC. It's always nice to get a tweet from you, folks. Everybody here tweet friendly? Would you all be tweeters? No? How many tweeters? Hands in the air now? Disappointing turnout on the tweet front. What about Facebook? Yeah. Hey, you're more social media Facebook friendly. Well, you can get in touch via Facebook as well, or you can email me at ralph at bbc.co.uk. But enough about me. Oh, well, actually, probably not. I could keep talking. Shall I keep talking? <laughs> We're going to get one more tune from the guys. Now, they had worked out, will the circle be unbroken? And I think that worked rather well despite my best attempts to sabotage it with backing vocals. But they're going to figure something out. But while they do, let me just say thank you to all the crew, everybody who's made this possible tonight. Thank you to the Empire Music Hall. What a beautiful venue. Round of applause for the venue, please. And the good people who run it. 
you're in Belfast, come see us. Stop your rambling, stop your gambling, stop staying out late at night, go home to your wife and your family, and sit down by the fireside bride. Okay. Sometimes I live in the town Is that right, Jim? If I can have the one I love I'll jump in that river and drown. Oh, don't do that, Jim. That's it, I'm afraid. I know, I know. Wasn't it great? And hopefully we'll see you all again in Music City Roots here in the Empire Music Hall. This is the first time I think it's been absolutely wonderful. Thank you for coming so much, folks. Music City Roots is a production of Hang Dang Media. Executive producers John Walker and Todd Mayo would like to send big thanks to co-executive producer Colin McGee of Pan Arts for inviting the show to Belfast and to Tourism Ireland for providing travel and accommodations for all the crew and artists. Also big thanks to Kyle O'Connell of IFTS and Dara Moffat for helping out all day and running cameras tonight. And to Chris Campbell at Professional Audio NI for the hire of the broadcast audio gear. We're glad you joined us for tonight's Music City Roots live from the Belfast Nashville Songwriters Festival here at the historic Empire Music Hall. I'm Ralph McLean from Belfast, Northern Ireland Mind yourself, good night. Hang guy. The wilderness road took Daniel Boone on his way, and the Cumberland Gap.